All right, guys, welcome. Uh, in this video, we will discuss multi-tenant architecture for SaaS applications on AWS. And uh, this is uh, basically, I'm gonna be working through an article from clickitech.com, uh, which is a pretty lengthy article on the multi-tenant architecture uh, for SaaS applications. However, it is full of very good content and I wanted to go over it. So uh, rather than, you know, you guys could read it all on your own, but it may put you to sleep or get boring if you were reading it by yourself. And so I figured it's better that we read it together and you will get to learn all of the aspects that we are covered in this blog as we learn. So cool, let's get started. Um, so first of all, it talks about how SaaS applications are the new normal. And SaaS, if you don't already know, which most of you probably already do know, is software as a service application. And, you know, this is used very commonly by all the major companies, whether it's Slack, Salesforce, or Zendesk, or anybody. And everybody has their own custom cloud software per customer. So for example, uh, if you are Salesforce and you're building sales APIs or uh, things and you have different customers and you want to provide your SaaS solutions to the different customers, how do you go about it? Do you put them all on the same database or, uh, you know, how do you actually structure all of that? So that's what we're actually going to be discussing. Now, most people think that in the background, they create a particular environment for each organization or code base or application and believe that Slack customers have their own server app environment. And if this is you, uh, you might have assumed that they have a reasonable, uh, repeatable process to run thousands of apps across all of their customers. Well, no, they don't use thousands of apps across all of their customers. What they use instead is a multi-tenant architecture on AWS for a SaaS application. And 70% of all of the web apps are considered SaaS applications. So if you know about SaaS architecture and multi-tenant, tenant, not tenant, uh, multi-tenant, you are probably covering 70% of the web app architecture landscape that would be available in the future. So this is a really important uh, topic to learn and know about. And while most of these applications are SaaS applications, very few are multi-tenant. And that's, you know, uh, something that we're going to discuss more as we go. So this research is intended to showcase an overview of the different strategies, challenges, constraints that DevOps and software developers are likely to face when architecting a SaaS multi-tenant application. So if you're looking to become a uh, software developer or perhaps move forward and become an architect in your company someday, uh, or if you are an architect, uh, this is also a very useful article. So uh, let's read through the table of contents here really quickly. So uh, what is multi-tenant architecture? Uh, SaaS technology stack for architecture on AWS, which is Amazon Web Services. Uh, types of multi-tenant SaaS architectures, the database layer, multi-tenancy, application code changes, uh, Python Django multi-tenancy in a nutshell, wildcard DNS subdomain URL based SaaS platform, web server setup with Nginx configuration, follow the 12 factor methodology framework or die trying, multi-tenant SaaS architecture best practices, final thoughts of multi-tenant SaaS architecture, and frequently asked questions. So we will do uh, i'll probably create this into a playlist and we will do each topic as its own little video so that uh, if you need to find a spot later you can easily jump to that video in the playlist or that section cool so 
there are two concepts that are important for us to understand before starting. Uh, the first concept is that of a tenant, which is the organization, the client, or the customer. And the second concept is a user, which is a user inside a tenant. So a tenant organization can have multiple and even thousands of users. So that depends on the size of the organization that is the tenant. So the next points are what we will explore in multi-tenant architecture for your SaaS applications. And this is just the table of contents once again. Uh, so just to review, what is the architecture, SaaS technology stack for the architecture, the types of tenants, uh, architectures, and the database layer, the application code changes, the Python Django multi-tenancy, the wildcard DNS subdomain issue, the 12 factor methodology framework or die trying, the multi-tenant SaaS architecture best practices, which is the best, and the final thoughts of the multi-tenant SaaS architecture. So this completes the introduction. In the next video, let's look at what the multi-tenant architecture is.